I'm looking at my watch, and it's time to watch how this watch list tracker works. First, enter the list of assets you want to analyze in the watch list. In this case, I've entered these hypothetical assets, including stocks, ETFs, and cryptocurrencies traded worldwide. As soon as you enter another asset, the watch list tracker automatically retrieves insightful statistics such as live price, percentage change, 52 week high and low, market cap, PE ratio, and sector. There's the option to enter any benchmark such as the S&P 500 to compare performance. If you buy any cryptos not available in Google Finance and in other currency pairs, don't worry about it. This tracker will simply convert it to your desired choice with this currency input. Once you enter your buy and sell target prices, you get a signal whether to buy, hold or sell. Maybe you noticed, but this tracker has two signal columns. For guidance, these dynamic buy and sell targets are automatically calculated by analyzing the 52-week historical price movement and applying customizable prediction factors. You can change these factors anytime you want to whatever fits your strategy. As one is never enough, this tracker includes three trendy charts so you can get a clear picture of the price movement in different time periods of your choice. If you don't like pictures, these two columns provide the same task, but displaying price and percentage change based on the number of days you choose to analyze. Finally, there's a complete screener tool, as well as three charts. This one compares your watch list versus benchmark year-to-date returns. And these two showcase your watch list's price performance based on the target buy price and the 52-week high. If you would like to skip the tutorial and access this ready-to-use tracker in light, dark, and cyberpunk theme, make sure to visit my Patreon, which is linked in the description of this video. Now, let's learn how to build this watchlist tracker from the beginning. Okay, so let's get this party started. We're gonna go to Google Sheets, and we're gonna start a blank new spreadsheet. So you wanna go to cell B17, and we're gonna paste all the column headers, so you can pause the video and copy them in the exact same cells where I'm pasting them. So if we select them all, it should be a total of 28. So what you want to do is select all these headers and wrap them. That way, whenever we make the column smaller, the letters wrap and make the row wider. And one more thing that we're going to do is select them all again and center them in the middle. So that's much better. So just try and make all the columns as small as possible. Up to you how, how small you want them, but just so that you can see most of them without having to scroll left and right. And now what you want to do is go to cell B13 and enter the benchmark. So I'm going to use the S&P 500 index as a benchmark. And then you can go to cell B15 and enter the crypto price. Okay, so as you saw in the demo, only these three columns are where we enter the manual data. So what I'm going to do is enter my hypothetical watch list with the target buys and target sells so that when we work with the rest of the formulas, we can instantly see the results. And most likely your watch list will be probably less than 100, so you can delete the rows after 100. Up to you if you wanna add more. What we're going to do is start working on each of the formulas one by one. All the formulas that I'm going to enter, they're going to be available in the description of this video. So simply click the link that takes you to a formula sheet, and then you can easily copy and paste the formulas in the exact same cells where I'm pasting them. I will also explain a few of them so that you can understand how they work and you can see how cool they are. So this is the formula for the manual signal. It uses the current price, but it's currently empty. So at the moment, they will all show buy most likely because they're empty. But essentially, we compare the target buy and sells with the current price, and we use it with an if statement. So if our current price is less than the target buy, then we get a buy signal. If our current price is greater than the target sell, then we get a sell signal. And if neither of these match, then we get a hold signal. So I'm just going to copy this, Command or Control C, go left, press control or command, and then go down all the way to the bottom, then go right, and then control or command shift, and the up arrow. So we're selecting all the rows, and now finally you just press control or command enter. So we drag down this formula with our keyboard. So I'm gonna enter the current price so you can see how the manual signal changes based on the current prices. This here is a very interesting formula because basically we are combining Google Finance with CoinMarketCap 
but at the same time we are applying a currency change based on the currency that we choose from cell C15. So it's pretty cool how we can combine everything with multiple if statements as well as using import XML. As you can see part of the import XML formula must use an XPath but we don't have that yet. So what I'm going to do now is enter the XPaths that we need. So as you can see if I drag down this formula I get errors for Bitcoin and Cardano because I entered their names like you're supposed to enter them when you use CoinMarketCap but we currently don't have any XPath parameter for the import XML formula. So we are going to work on the parameters table and we're going to do it in column AF. In this tracker, we're just going to use the current price and market cap. But if you want to edit your market cap and add even more statistics on cryptocurrencies, feel free to just keep adding columns here and adding more parameters. So what you want to do is go to coinmarketcap.com and just choose whichever currency you want from here. So I'm going to choose Ethereum. And what we want to get is this information here. This is the current price and it updates automatically. So what you want to do is right click this and go to inspect. And that's the current price. So you want to right click that, go to copy and then copy XPath. So now we go back to our sheet and you just want to paste that XPath here. And we're going to do the same for market cap. So go back to coin market cap and we want the current market cap, which is this one here. So again, right click that, go to inspect. We got the market cap there, right click, copy, copy XPath, go back to the sheet and paste it there. So now when we go to our formula, we can see that all the assets that we entered have a current price now and we get the current price in US dollars. The formula should link directly to the X path already. So just make sure to paste it in the exact same cell that I did just so that the formulas work. So how do you figure out what name to enter for your currency? If we go back to coin market cap and uh, let's use Cardano. Once you're in the page for the specific coin, just look at the URL and the last word is what you're going to enter in the tracker. So in this case, it is Cardano. If we go back, you could look at Shiba Inu and it's going to be like this, Shiba Inu. So just make sure to enter the ticker name like that when you're using a cryptocurrency from CoinMarketCap. For Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin and Bitcoin Cash, you can use tickers like this one here because these four cryptocurrencies, they're included in the Google Finance database. So Bitcoin we can do it from either way so if you want to get the current price from Google's database you just enter BTC USD and you get the current price from Google okay so let's continue with the rest of the columns we're gonna merge these two and we're gonna enter a trendy chart here we use the spark line with a Google Finance function to get a nice column chart if by any chance you don't like the color you can simply change the color code here and as you can see, all of them get a trendy chart except Cardano because Cardano is not gathering data from Google Sheets. Therefore, it's going to be empty. For those international traders that want to enter the cryptocurrencies in other currencies, you can do it here in the Google Finance cryptos by just changing the currency at the end. So say you want Ethereum and Canadian dollars, you just enter it. ETHCAD and the current price is shown in Canadian dollars. And for this one, for Cardano or any other that you might want to add, say Ripple, imagine you bought Cardano and Ripple in euros. So all you do is change it here to euros and the current prices for these two currencies are going to change to euros. This one's a really cool formula. We're calculating the year to date return. So just the return that this specific ticker has had in the last 365 days. So it's a good way to understand the performance that it's had. And to make it more interesting, we find the year to date return for the benchmark that we choose. So then you can compare how each of your assets performed versus the benchmark. So in this case, we're using the S&P 500. Oh, and one thing I forgot to show you is that there's a cell here where you can change the number of days that you want to see in the charts. So say 30 days, we get a chart of the last 30 days. So we're going to select these two columns and merge them. And we're just going to drag it down and these two as well. Here's where we're going to calculate the automatic target buy and sells by using these specific factors. So what you want to do is enter 0.5 in this one and 0.85 in this one. And we're going to select this cell, go to one, two, three, custom number format. And for the custom number format, you're going to enter 0.00, .00 percentage and then in quotations factor. 
click apply and as you can see we have the word factor after the percentage and then if you want to change your strategy and make it i don't know 55 percent then this one here is fully dynamic as well you just enter your percentage 30 55 80 and it changes while maintaining a really nice aesthetic we do the same with this cell and it should be saved here so you can just click it and there it is 85 percent so what this formula is saying is that when the difference between the 52 week high and low is 50% or less of the 52 week low, then it's a buy. And then for this one, which is the target sell, it's quite similar. So it's uh, when the difference between the 52 week high and low is 85% or higher from the 52 week high, then it's a sell. We just use these factors as an assumption, but you can change them to whatever you want to and play around with the percentages so you can see how the numbers change. So it's whatever best fits your strategy. This signal formula is exactly the same as the one we used on the left side, but in this case we're just looking at the automatic target buy and sell figures. These two columns here, they're exactly the same as 50% factor and 85% factor, as in we're going to change the format of them so that they are dynamic and you can enter the amount of days that you want. So you want to enter 5 and 5 and we're going to go to 1, 2, 3, custom number format and enter the following. So as you can see, I can change this to 10 and the title changes to price 10 days ago. So we do the same for this one. So super dynamic, very easy to use and extremely useful. Now let's continue with the market cap. This here is a formula very similar to the one that I used in the current price because I'm combining databases from Google Finance and a database from CoinMarketCap. So as you can see, I am using this cell for CoinMarketCap, the XPath, as well as the market cap attribute in the Google Finance function. To get the sector, we're using this website called fidelity.com and unfortunately this is only for US stocks. So if by any chance you add international stocks or cryptocurrencies to your watchlist tracker, you will have to enter them manually. And that is the message that it shows when it can't find the sector. You can also select all these columns and wrap their text. So that is the main table for the watch list. Now what we're going to do is work on the screener table. So you want to go to cell T3 and I'm going to merge these two and enter the following formula. We're entering a title, but this title is combined with a formula so that we can get the currency of the ticker that we are screening. So here's where you're going to enter your ticker. So I'm just going to enter a random ticker. And as you can see, Tesla's stock is trading in the US dollars. We're going to enter signal in this last row, but we're going to merge it. Okay, so I'm going to enter the formulas now. As you can see, a lot of the formulas that I'm going to be entering in the screener, they're simply Google Finance. And we're just using the different attributes that Google Finance has to find relevant statistics in the screener. And here we're going to enter some dynamic titles as well. So I just enter any number here. So I'm just going to enter 30 and 365. And I'm going to change the format. I like to call these sparklines trendy charts. They show trends and they are pretty trendy. This one will be exactly the same and it should be saved there. So you can just click it, apply it, and there it is. So as you can see, I change any number and the title updates automatically. So what we're going to do now is select all these cells and merge them. Same with this one. And here's where we're going to enter the sparkline function with the Google function to get the trendy chart. It's a simple line chart, but if you want to change the color, you could do it this way. And that is pretty much the skeleton of this tracker. We're just missing the top three charts, but before I work on them, I'm just going to quickly format this sheet so that it looks quite similar to the demo. Okay, so I am back and a few of the differences that you'll notice are the borders around the tables and the background colors. That's pretty simple to apply. You just use these two buttons here. I'll just quickly show you the conditional formatting that I applied to the table. It's super simple. So all you do is select the rows that you want. You go to format, 
conditional formatting. And for all the signal cells, I entered a format rule that if the text is exactly buy, sell, or hold, I format it in this specific style. So I made it as green for buy, red for sell, and yellow for hold. And I did something very similar for all the percentages that you can see, because I like to see positive percentages as green and negative as red. Again, you select all the cells that you want to format. The rule is if it's greater than zero, make it green. And if it's less than zero, make it red. There's one last conditional formatting that I entered and it was for these three columns. So we get a format, conditional formatting. I enter the custom formula that pretty much expresses that if B18 is not empty, then format it in this style. So all the empty cells are going to be white, but then when they're not empty, they turn blue in this style. And now let's continue with the charts. So we want to select the tickers, then while holding command or control, select the year to date return. And again, select the benchmark year to date return. Go to insert chart. And for the chart type, we're going to choose a combo chart. So for the second chart, we're going to select the tickers again and column I, which is the percentage of buy price. And for the last chart, we're going to select the tickers. And then by pressing command or control, we're going to select the percentage of 52 week high. And that is it for today's tutorial. I hope you find this very useful so that you can understand your investments better and your performance. This is Planet Finance. Thanks for joining me. Until next time, happy learning.